Chat, hi guys, and welcome to this week's Midweek with India Chat. This is Muskan Kapoor, and I'm joined here with Jay Vora, and we're going to discuss pointers that happened in this week and are ought to happen as well. So, without any further ado, I will just get started. So, I wanted to ask you a question regarding inflation. So, there are a few key points that were released, and how are that going to react to uh, with respect to the inflation that is there at this point? And also, we have the Fed's meet today. What is the expectation? Are we expecting another rate hike? Is there a pause? Right. So yesterday we had the CPI data, and uh, you know that had come. I mean, the CPI data had come below expectation, but the core CPI was bang in line. And if we see, I mean, I would have thought that the yields may go down uh, because the CPI, uh, you know, had beat the expectation. But when we look at the you know the data beneath that then it looks like that the core uh, inflation or the core cpi is still you know not coming down to the pace which probably the fed might have wanted or the market would have expected and that is why the yields actually went up uh, yesterday okay so uh, so that is telling you that the market is not very convinced uh, with the way inflation uh, trajectory is going and uh, that is why, uh, you know, I mean, the yield spiked. And if we see, you know, if I have to see all the data points together, then it indicates that the US economy is still resilient and strong. And despite such, you know, big rate hikes that we have seen in the past six months to 12 months, you know, despite of that, the US economy is very resilient. And the good part is that the inflation uh, has also started to come down because if we see core inflation was at 6.5 or something from there, it has come down to 5.1. Ideally, the pace should have been better, but uh, nevertheless, it is coming down. So I think there has been not much of a, uh, you know, negative surprise or a surprise, uh, you know, on the upside in any of the key data points. So maybe I would think that the Fed will go with a pause for this time and, and they will see how the data plays out in the coming uh, weeks and months. And probably after that, uh, you know, they will think uh, what to do. I mean, if supposedly the inflation is still very sticky, then they might be tempted or they might be wanting to, you know, rate uh, the hike, hike the rate. But apart from that, I think that uh, they will, uh, you know, uh, stay where it is right now and they might not hike the rate. And one more important data point was the unemployment rate, which has, you know, finally come up a bit. Uh, so earlier it was 3.4. Now it has jumped to 3.7. And the other thing was the jobless claim uh, data. So even that showed a bit of a spike. So, which means that there is some sort of weakness that we are now starting to see in the job market. However, uh, let's see how it goes. But, you know, broadly, it looks like that there have been no negative surprise as such, you know, which have been out of whack. So that's why I think the Fed will, uh, you know, pause tonight and, and we will see how things go. And I think the language will be very important as to how Fed is thinking. And that is how, you know, that may determine the market reaction today. Yes, I agree. I feel like a lot of times a Fed's language sort of indicates what's going to happen next and what decisions yes. might be coming ahead. So yes, we're looking forward to how it's going to be placed today. Anyway, moving forward, uh, the short positioning in the S&P 500 index have dropped meaningfully. What is the outlook over there? Do we expect a further covering rally or what's going to happen? Sure. So I'll quickly share my screen. So, you know, at this point, uh, you know, we were debating if there will be a breakout or no. There was a breakout wherein the S&P 500 had gone above 4200, but again, it pulled back. But if you see the averages were held, uh, you know, during this consolidation, which was a good sign. Eventually, uh, I mean, during this phase, uh, during this phase, a lot of shots had been accumulated. Okay, so despite SNP was trying to break out, you know, people were uh, accumulating shots. But now, finally, when there has been a decisive break out of this range, which is uh, forty one fifty to forty one hundred on SNP, you know, there has been a very good runaway rally in the SNP five hundred. 
And now when we look at the short positions uh, in the S&P 500, so let me look at the CTF, CFTC data. So I think uh, if I recall correctly, the short positions are now around 3,45,000 contracts, which were earlier around 3,40,000, I, I mean 4,40,000 contracts, which was actually the all-time high. So, you know, we have now seen a meaningful reduction of, say, somewhere around 90,000 90, contracts. But uh, when we see the data in the past, Okay, this is still very high. Okay, so in 2015, it was around 2,40,000, which was very high. And, and around that time, the market made bottom and it started to inch higher. Okay, so even uh, when the market bottomed out around the 2015 kind of zone, okay, after that, that was a meaningful bottom and the market had rallied significantly. So, you know, See, looking at the current short position, it is still very high. So there is a scope of an up move uh, in the S&P 500, even in the days to come. But see over here, right now, what is happening is that, uh, let me clear the drawing. So you can see right now there has been a five wave rise, which we have seen. So there might be some degree of pullback of this five wave rise. But once the pullback is complete, I think there is still a long way to go on the up, on the upside. So, so, you know, I don't think that the uptrend which has started in the SNP is going to, uh, you know, end soon. And also when we look at the retracement level, so let me take a weekly chart and compress the data a bit. So when we look at the weekly chart, It is also, uh, it might also close below the 61.8% retracement mark this week. So, you know, that can further lead to short covering uh, rally as well, because, uh, you know, a lot of people are short and at the, at such points, you know, 61.8% mark becomes very crucial because that is two third of the, you know, of the entire decline. So that is now getting retraced back. So, which is very uh, significant. So I am expecting further short covering rally in the S&P 500. And then if we purely look at the retracement level, then 78.6% retracement level, which is around 45, 40, you know, that can be the upside level. And also in terms of wave count, you know, we are actually thinking that this, uh, that this was wave one, this was wave two, and now wave three is starting. Okay. So if we go by the equality level, I think that comes to around 44. Wait a second, I'll just put it on the chart. So that comes to around 4476. So 4476 to 4540, you know, that can be the near term upside for the S&P 500 index. And broadly, if we see, uh, you know, things look good. Even if you see NASDAQ 100, you know, it has also, you know, significantly broken above the 61.8% retracement mark. And in fact, it is heading very higher, very closer to the 78.6% retracement mark. Okay. So if that breaks, then, you know, the next level to watch out for would actually be the all time high. And, and, you know, who would have imagined that the, the sentiment was so bad, you know, a few months back, but guess what? I mean, and NASDAQ hundred is almost, you know, on the verge of reclaiming its uh, previous high. So that is how the market can surprise us. And, but, you know, there is one, uh, you know, note of caution, which I want to mention that in many of the, uh, you know, index like S&P 500, then NASDAQ, you know, you can see a clean five wave rise getting complete. And right now, when we look at the daily sentiment index, which, uh, you know, measures the sentiment of the, uh, you know, all the people, so that has actually come to around 90, 91 level or so. It is basically around the overbought zone. So that is where, you know, we need to be cautious in the near term because, uh, you know, a smaller degree pullback can be possible. But I think there might be a pullback up to the 20 day or, you know, towards the previous low. And ultimately it might again, uh, you know, start inching higher. So that is how broadly the setup is. And, and I think it, we should have a positive environment in the coming weeks, but a minor degree correction here and there cannot be ruled out in the near term. Makes sense. Looking forward to how 
the coming weeks are placed for us and we'll be updating everybody every week about how this step goes ahead yes so i'll come back to the indian markets now the nifty index so it's been taking a yeah. pause and going higher very slowly so it's showing any sign of it being exhausted and the momentum is slowing down what is it is there a case of reversal what is happening to nifty yeah so see the problem in the nifty index is that the pace on the upside is actually uh, you know slowing down and that is leading to a lot of negative divergence in the uh, in the nifty index so you can see over here that the nifty index is making higher highs but the momentum indicator is not making higher highs and that is uh, indicating divergence but you know that can happen uh, when the sentiments you know specifically are uh, you can say weak because as you know the sentiment was really bad when we were at the bottom okay mm -hmm. so it was probably around this point or something you know where shorts got covered and right now you know in the futures market the positioning is more or less neutral and that is why you know we are probably seeing a slow grind but uh, in nifty index i think uh, the previous low which is 18 555 uh, and the 20 day average so this can be dynamic uh, so 20 day average so these two are the important support levels to watch out for in the near term only if we get a close below the 20 day average that is where you know we can consider uh, that is where we can think of a pause or a correction in terms of wave count uh, you know it it is actually a little bit tricky because over here as of now wave 3 is not the shortest so i think the point was 18990 mm -hmm. the moment nifty crosses 18990 if in if in this ongoing up move it crosses 18990 then actually wave 3 will become the shortest and then we will have to change the entire account and that would be even more bullish which would be 1 2 1 2 then mm -hmm. it then the ongoing up move will be considered as 3 4 there will be again a three and a four and the up move can go on okay without any major correction so this is what we are you know watching very closely if the nifty index uh, you know scales out 18 990 or no in this ongoing up move but as of now uh, again you know similar to the s&p 500 there is a five wave rise which possibly the nifty is uh, you know going to end at some point of time once that happens there will be a minor degree pullback you know it can probably be to uh, you know back to the previous uh, low or it can even be to the 20 day but suppose in that correction if the 20 day breaks then there is a possibility of a, a correction up to the 40 day exponential but in the near term uh, you know as long as we don't at least see a negative daily close we can expect the nifty index to inch higher and probably you know also test the all time high of uh, 18 triple 8 so that would be the expectation in the near term but see there is one uh, you know one catch over here so while the nifty index is inching higher the the largest part of the nifty is actually not performing which is the bank nifty and you can see that it has you know literally gone sideways in the past few days Why and is it this. Why is it? Sorry. So? Why is it so? Why so, is the So I don't know. I mean, the banking stocks are not just participating in this uh, up move, and that is where you know it is leading to some sort of divergence. Because if we if we see you know small and mid cap stocks, I mean they are skyrocketing because there is I mean there is barely one or two days kind of correction, and then they continue to inch higher. Okay, but somewhere the momentum in the bank nifty is lost so for bank nifty specifically you know we are watching very closely if the uh, friday's low is held or no so friday's low is 43874 okay mm. if that gets taken out on the downside then there can be some correction you know up to the daily lower band or the 40 day average uh, and we will need to see then how the bank nifty behaves if at all the low gets broken on the downside and on the upside, you know, the confirmation that we will be watching out for will be the break of the high, which is 44,500 approx. Okay. So bank Nifty has to break either side to see, you know, some directional move. 
or else it is going to consolidate in this narrow 400 500 point kind of band so probably you know uh, watching bank nifty will give us some more clue but uh, as of now you know as long as uh, the bank nifty is not giving some confirmation so we will we will stay with the trend and as of now the trend is up and even you can see in the mid cap index also you know they are rising higher but again you know one need to be a little cautious because within wave 3 okay it is 1 2 3 4 and now we are in wave 5 so now we don't know if wave 5 is other uh, is again going to sub divide or no so so that is something that we will watch at the later date but over year also you know some degree of caution needs to be maintained because you know over year as well we can actually see a divergence so uh, you know broadly i think the hourly averages will be very important in the nifty mid cap index if those break then you know that will be first sign of weakness but as of now, there is no weakness uh, that is visible. And Bank Nifty, uh, you know, remains kind of a pain point in the near term. And we need to see if the Bank Nifty eventually catches up on the upside or this divergence, you know, translate eventually into Nifty correcting on the downside. So that is something that, you know, we are watching very closely every day, but we don't have any confirmation yet. And because we don't have any confirmation, so we will stick with the prior trend. Uh, I mean, the with the current trend and the current trend at this point of time is up. Yes, correct. Makes sense. Uh, if you would have asked me six, eight months back if Nifty would have performed this way, I would have never bet on it. And now we are seeing market surprises in various ways. So I'm looking so forward actually to we, you know, So actually, we had also pointed out the short positioning of FIs. You know, that probably was the biggest trigger. And it actually played out the way, you know, we were anticipating. Now the same thing is actually happening in S&P 500. So while, you know, Nifty might be into that, uh, you know, sort of exhaustion mode, or you can say that the momentum is slowing down, but the momentum in the US market is good. So at the best, you know, what can happen is that there can be some degree of correction, but broadly, uh, we can say that for next few weeks or maybe a couple of months, the trend should largely be positive. Got it. Perfect. It was a lovely session. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.